Hey, my name is Patrick. I am on the Microsoft Edge team and today I would like to talk to you about the Microsoft Edge DevTools 3D view tool. This will be very hands-on. We'll take a look at a demo page that I've got here that I made on purpose to demonstrate the 3D view tool and we'll see how we can use the 3D view tool to investigate some common problems with web developments uh, such as DOM problems or Zindex stacking problems or out of document elements, unwanted scroll bars, and even performance problems related to composited layers. So let's dive in. I will open the 3D view tool on this demo page here. And um, I'm by default, I'm on the elements panel, which I'm not gonna be using here. I'm gonna use the 3D view tool, which I've got already in my activity bar here. If you don't, you can click on the plus button and you'll find it in this list here. So let me open that. So the 3D view tools has three modes, DOM, Z-index and composited layers. The first one that we'll take a look now is DOM. This is probably the uh, simplest to understand and to use at first. It's a 3D representation of the web page and the way that things are organized is by nesting in the DOM tree. So that means that the elements that are the highest in the stack are actually the most deeply nested in the tree. So one common use case that this 3D view tool helps with is debugging very deeply nested DOM trees. If you have many elements that are nested into each other in the DOM, this can actually become a problem pretty quickly. It's harder to maintain, it's harder to understand when you open DevTools what's happening and where to find things, and it can even become a performance problem at some point. If you have too many elements and a very deeply nested DOM tree, there may be cases where the browser has to do more work to restyle and relay out the page when things change. And so detecting those things um, can be useful using the tool. And with the DOM node, sorry, the DOM mode in this tool, it's very easy to see those problems because you can see high towers um, sort of structures when you rotate the scene in 3D and you can see that everything's more or less flat. So it's like two or three or four levels of DOM nesting, not more, but this one here seems to have quite a lot more elements. And so that gives us a really quick way to investigate those sort of potential problems. Uh, and what you can do here is you can directly click on one of those elements here with the mouse, and that will bring you right into the elements panel where the element is currently in. So in that case, it's a link here, and I see that it's uh, in a paragraph here, and I have these like dozen or so divs that are nested and they don't seem to be playing any sort of role here. So the fix would probably be very simple to just remove them. Uh, in your case, maybe you're reusing components that have been shared with other teams and that might be introducing more elements that are wrapping your own things or maybe you're trying to achieve a certain CSS style or a JavaScript effect and you do need those elements. But in any case, having this quick 3D representation is really useful because you can immediately see you don't have to like scroll and expand things in this elements panel in an attempt to find the deeply nested uh, DOM elements. One other use case that is very easy to investigate with a 3D view here is out of document elements. And this can happen pretty often. Let's say you have an element that's outside of the document because you want to animate it later. You want to make it slide into the document maybe when the user scrolls uh, to that point. Or here I've got one which is uh, actually a skip link. If you use the keyboard and you tab from the browser UI to the page, the first element that's going to be focused or selected with the keyboard is a link to skip to the main content. And you can't see it here. And the reason is that it's really useful for people who use assistive technology like screen readers. They'll First time they tap, they'll go to that link and it's going to tell them, hey, press enter if you want to skip to the main content. So you can skip the navigation bar, the title, the illustration, for example. And I can do it here. If I press enter, I go right to um, the main content of the article here. And because this is only for assistive technology in my case, um, I'm not interested in showing this link. Uh, and therefore, it's off to the side outside of the document boundary. And therefore, it's hard to debug. If I wanted to see where it is, if I wanted to debug it, I wouldn't be able to use the select element 
um, tool because it's not in the viewport, it's not accessible, it's somewhere outside of the browser, right? And even right click inspect wouldn't work because I just can't right click on it. And so I could use the elements panel again to try and find it. But again, if you have a pretty complex DOM tree, that might be time consuming or difficult. Um, using the 3D view tool in that case makes this very simple because you can unzoom to like a position where you can see the entire document, including what's outside of it. So in that case, I can very easily uh, zoom back to this one and click on it. And then I'll be brought directly to the right place in the elements panel. Um, this ability of finding outside of the document elements can also become very useful when you have unwanted scroll bars. So if I scroll down my page here at the bottom, I have this horizontal scroll bar, which is not ideal. I don't need it. My content is supposed to fit in this one column of text. Um, so this is obviously a bug that I want to resolve and I don't know why this bug is here. It's like complicated and unwanted scroll bars are usually pretty frustrating to investigate. In that case, I can use the still the same DOM mode uh, and I can go to the bottom of my page where I know this thing is located. Let me unzoom a little bit. Um, and I'll actually you can reset the view if you're like me, you've gotten lost in 3D. So you can reset the view to start from scratch. And I'm going to zoom in slowly to where this element is, which is this sort of like navigation bar or list of links. And sure enough, I can see that although all of the elements are contained within this column here, this purple column, one of them seems to stick out here a little bit. Right, this one is um, a little bit wider than the other ones. And so what that gives me is a really simple way to find where to start investigating because unwanted scroll bars are hard to debug because first of all, you don't necessarily know where to start investigating. So that way I can see where it is. I can click on it and that's going to give me a pointer to that div element, which happens to have a problem here because it has a box sizing of content box in CSS, but it also has width 100% and padding 10 pixels. And so because of the way CSS content uh, box works, that actually gives me an element that's wider than the full width that it has access to. So I can just disable this content box box sizing and my um, scroll bar is gone. So that's another really good use case to use the 3D view tool for. Um, as I mentioned before, there are three modes. The second one is the index, which is the same thing. It gives you a 3D representation of the page, but it's not organized the same way. The way that things are organized is by how high they are in the stacking context tree. Uh, when you start using the index, it's easy to find yourself in a situation where you have a pop up and maybe a drop down menu and a tooltip that all compete for being at the top of the page, right? To, to have the highest Z index. And, and that's when problem may occur because things are not nested in the same stacking context uh, part of the tree. And so sometimes people rely on arbitrarily high Z index values to try and solve this, but it doesn't always work. Uh, and so this tool, this Z index mode, helps a lot with that because it allows you to see in 3D how the stacking context tree is made up and therefore you can sort of start to understand where the problems might be. We'll jump right into the third mode, which is the composited layer mode, because I think it's uh, one of the newest addition to the tool and it's also one of the most interesting. So before we dive in uh, to this composited layer mode, we need to understand a little bit how a browser engine uh, renders a page. There's this uh, series of events that take place, starting with parsing the HTML to, to construct the DOM tree, parsing the CSS to build the list of styles, uh, creating the layout to understand where every element will go. And then at the end of it is the painting. That's when the browser engine actually paints the pixels on the screen, right? Depending on where each box is supposed to go, depending on the font, depending on the styles, etc., etc. And painting doesn't always happen in one go. 
in many cases, the page is actually it's just one layer, right? And it and the browser engine paints it all in one go, which also means that whenever the page changes, the browser engine needs to repaint the whole thing again. Uh, but in some cases, the web page is constructed in a way that some of its parts are actually extracted in separate layers. The browser does this for performance reasons, so that if that standalone part needs to be repainted because it changed, then the browser engine can only repaint that one part and then recompose the entire image from multiple parts. So it can slice and split the image in several parts that can be updated independently. And those are what we call layers. Uh, and in that case, if I use the composited layers mode in that 3D view tool, and I zoom in here, I can see that as I hover my mouse over some of the regions, they light up in blue. And that part here in the middle, apparently is its own layer. Um, I can also use the tree view here on the side to see the list of layers. There's one for the entire document, which is the entire page. And there's one for this list of images, UL um, list uh, of images here. There's also one for the scroll bar here in the side, but we don't really want to worry too much about this one. So I can zoom in a little bit on this list of layers. And uh, what that thing does in my web page is I can click on those numbers to change the image. This is an image gallery, sort of a carousel animation. And I can click on those links to just scroll to a different image. And as I do that, I certainly do not want the entire page to repaint, right? I know that the rest is not changing. I know that this text does not change. Um, and so that uh, being able to tell the browser to create a layer specifically for this carousel animation allows me to make my website more um, performant. And we can actually check in the details panel here uh, what happens if I if you keep an eye on the paint count number here and I click on different images, you can see it will increase uh, quite rapidly because the this is an animation. So at every frame of the animation, the browser needs to repaint. This is what it's doing here. If now I click on the document layer, it's only been painted nine times. And if I click on this animation again, that number does not increase. So I can be certain that my entire web page does not need to be repainted every time I do this animation, which is good for performance. That's about it for the features of the 3D view tool. You might have used a tool called layers in the past. I can open it up in DevTools by using the command menu and typing layers. This is a separate panel, um, which did the same thing as the composited layers part of the 3D view tool. We're in the process of moving it into the 3D view tool so that it makes more sense, it's more consistent, and there are fewer panels to deal with. And we think this is a better experience because you don't need to worry about having so many different panels and, and, and things working slightly differently across them. So the layers panel still exists. Now it's replaced with just this text here to tell you to go and use the 3D view tool. And in a very near um, release, we're actually going to remove the layers panel uh, entirely. And so that's it. That's what I wanted to show you here. Uh, if you want to leave us feedback about the 3D view tool or about anything else related to DevTools, I would strongly encourage you to go and join us on our discussion forum, which is actually a GitHub repository. If you go to github.com slash Microsoft Edge slash DevTools, you can drop us an issue or comment on some of the existing issues. Um, and we would love to hear your feedback about the 3D view tool or anything else. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening and I'll see you later.